welcome back to Pwn TV, ladies and gentlemen. I did promise you guys another video with some Odyssey, so I put a party together, and I decided to bring Bard. I thought Bard would be really good for this content. So here we go. I uh, got in on Pwnslot's Bard. He's got a three-song Bard, and he, you know, he he's got some pretty good DPS with Twashtar as well, so he can kind of carry a little bit. And I have a group full of DPS as well, so all I'm really going to do is do evasion songs for the beginning, and honor march as well, and then just rock that out because it is 119 content. But anyway, what we want to do is we want to go all the way through the lower floors and get to the floor that has the uh, halo on it. And that's the plan. That's going to save me time since it's a 30 minute event. So we'll skip some of these other smaller camps and we'll find the Halo camp. Okay, so we have Mandragoras at the Halo camp. That's fine. Mandragoras are really easy. Super easy. Additional effect, death. Let's go. So OP. Holy cow. So we're gonna slay a whole bunch of these Mandragoras, clear out everything around the circle, and then we're going to attack the circle. But there is a lot of fodder in the way. So I did decide to really cut a lot of this out to keep the video short. These were each 30 minute runs and I squeezed all three of them into a, you know, 30 minute video. And the circles are not scary, honestly. Like, these are the weakest struck, like, this type of battle. They have, they have this in Dynamis Divergence and in L Lady Lilith, etc. This is not as scary as those. So there's a small gimmick where you can't target anything else that aggros you if it's invisible. But you can if you kill the Halo. The Halo's keeping you from being able to target the beastmen that surround the Halo. No big deal. I have a monk that's going to counterattack everything. And a paladin, I believe. That's going to, uh, one of these runs I bring paladin to the party. Paladin is OP. Majesty kind of carries, honestly. So that circle went down really fast. DPS King is d DCing, but looks like he's back, so that's good. Now all the orcs are targetable, and they're all stunned because summoner are OP. They're really not that scary, especially if you have a counterattack, or Utsusimi, or, you know, Sentinel or something. Even Cocoon would be good. You could sub blue and have Cocoon. 20k Howling Fist to the face is also pretty OP, so Monk is kind of a hard carry in this content, I think. They do have a lot of HP, that's the one thing about these guys. They have a lot of HP in comparison to all the other fodder mobs, but they really can't do anything to you. I don't think I've really ever wiped against these particular mobs. Once the circle goes down, you know, if the circle goes down really quickly and you can just target them right away, yeah, it's easy. Killing the circle is the hard part, but I mean, Monk, OP, pretty much. Bringing a bard with a Rima Twashtar is also pretty good, I guess. A little bit extra spicy damage. And you can always bring, like, say, Corsair, and they could rock Savage Blade, Lead and Salute, and also be uh, support. Jobs like that are pretty versatile and pretty handy here in the 30 minute time limit. Half our time's already gone, but we got our first circle. So ideally, if you want to really rush through this content, you probably want to get the circle done in the first 10 minutes or less. And then maybe spend your Izzat if you got it, but if you don't, then, I mean, just keep going up or keep slaying and get more Izzat. Like, that's the thing I'm trying to figure out right now. What is a good amount of time to dedicate to getting Izzat? Because it seems like it's a really random currency to drop. But in this run, I did manage to get it because you killed the, the Halo, you get some Izzat off of those mobs when you kill those those mobs, and then you can spend it to pop another NM. This sapling is not all that terrifying. I'm really not scared of this guy. I don't really see him doing anything that scary that's going to kill us in any situation, so maybe we got lucky and we spawned an NM that was like super duper weak. But uh, I do know that, you know, spinning your Izzat on a NM pop is going to get you more loot you can take out of the event afterward. So that's one of the benefits to that. When, you, when the event ends, you don't keep your Izzat. It's just like an in-event only currency. So you spend it before you leave. And the best way to do that is open up chests or pop NMs like this and actually get drops from them. So in this case, we got three more scales in a box, which could contain a handful of scales. 
somebody was telling me they got 50 out of one. But there are two different boxes. One's a small box and one's a large box. So I bet you you could get 99 though out of the large. So the top floor doesn't seem to have anything on it this time, which is interesting. I was kind of expecting up here to have an exit or a boss area, but it seems to me like it's random where they put the boss area, but the exit actually isn't random, and I discover that right here when I go to the top and see no exit. I'm like, oh, okay, well, the exit doesn't have to be at the top of the map, and it's not actually at the top of the map. This map forks, so you go back down from the top here, you can go around a corner, and it's a fork. You can go to the other side of the fork and exit that way, which we'll get to in a moment. So yeah, going up to the top doesn't really benefit you if there's no objectives up there. You like no miniature objectives. Like if there's no if there's no halo up there, I wouldn't go. If there's no uh, uh, boss UNM tornado pop area up there, then I wouldn't go. And if there's no chest up there, then I wouldn't really bother either because it's out of the way and it's a timed event. So you're going to want to stay as close to the exit as you can, and the exit actually happens to be down here by this floor. This is about like the middle, right? And you fork. If you go left instead of right, you end up in this dead end that actually has the exit that goes to the next floor. And apparently you can activate it anytime you want, so you can always go to the next floor right away in the first two minutes of the content. You know, you could just flee here and then pop, go up to the next floor. I don't know if that benefits you though, honestly, because I think all the floors are copies of each other anyway. So if you want to put a party together that really wants to farm halos, for example, then maybe you kill the halo on each floor and then quickly go up to the next floor and you farm nothing else. And then maybe that's your strategy. So that's possibly why they ended up giving us multiple copies of the floor. They probably were just sick of people complaining about how there was nothing left to do for the last 20 minutes because they cleared the floor in 10 uh, in other content with Walk of Echoes. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. I have no idea why they chose to put so many floors stacked on top of each other for 30 minute content. But whatever. So you, the speed we're going right now is really really bad. I mean we only have a minute left in the content and this is the middle of wave 2. Now granted I did just get another additional fake death, but what does that do for me? It doesn't really do anything other than give me a scale. So really I'm just farming scales for the last minute here. There's nothing left to do. Um, I could go up, but I don't have enough time. So I've never really been to the top floor. Like, I don't even know where all the confluxes are yet to get to the top floor. But uh, I'm learning. It is a learning experience. And I'm sure they're going to tweak it after the next version update anyway, once they've got some feedback from people. So I'm just going to quartermaster everything here for the last minute so we don't lose anything. And then split it up in the... Uh, town after we get out of the content. No I would say though that this was a pretty successful run, all things considered. I'm very psyched about this run. I think this was my best run. Until tomorrow. Tomorrow's probably going to be a better run, because now I'm pretty confident in my ability in the content, especially on Pones a lot. So I'll just give everyone their cut. Have some loot, bruh. There you go. Merry Christmas. This person gets one extra because there was a leftover and they won the random dice roll. Alright, so Ponzilla. Why not? We needed some Ponzilla love too, right? I've been working hard on this character. So yeah, he's Paladin Sub Ninja, offhanding a Mercurial Chris for additional effect, uh, occasionally attacks two or three times. Pretty OP. So I'm just gonna sneak through and look for the uh, Halo. Here it is. Manticore floor, that's kind of gross actually. I really, I mean, it could be worse. It could could be Dommels or Slimes or Scorpions. You know, those are kind of annoying floors. So we'll just drop some bodies, get these Manticores out of the way. Knights of the Round. Not yet, just kidding. Knights of Round! No, no, not yet, just just totally kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay, Ponzilla, well done. <laughs> He's doing all the damage. Knights of Round! <laughs> Let's go! Yeah, I got one! That's right. I helped. <laughs> Skilling up my magic skill, brah. Couldn't be that hard carry one day. 
I like pulling them in advance so I can kind of save some time. They don't have to take more time pathing over here because they're already here bashing in my face. Totally kind of an OP strategy. Especially if you don't care about their damage. And I don't. I mean, I have full Zuvra in plus one and Utsusumi Shadows. I think I'm good. This character does need a lot of work still. Especially with fast cast. I need to work on that. Probably first, actually. My main paladin was Pones a lot. Bird Gang, Mythic, Afterglow paladin now. And the first set I ever built for him was a fast cast set before I built anything else. And I don't regret that decision. And now I see why. <laughs> That's okay, Knights of Round. Not scared. Bash face, let's go. But of course, you know, I'm a paladin. I need a shield sometimes. So I got a couple options. I don't think Aegis helps me a lot here. And uh, I mean, most of my other shields are kind of meh. But at least I have a shield. So it's Halo time. Got a fire Halo, but also an ad. So I'll just take care of the ad first. And then the fire Halo goes down. That's the plan. Gonna wreck that fire Halo. It's gonna get off my screen. I'm gonna Savage Blade it. I don't know, I could do a number of things. Okay, we definitely need to keep our guys alive. That's kind of important. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure that he's not getting hit in the face because I'm gonna Invincible. You have no option other than to actually aggro Ponzilla because Invincible says so. The, the distance on this guy looks a little deceptive. You have to be much closer to actually attack this thing than where I'm at right now. I can't attack it. I'm too far away. My arms aren't long enough. But that's okay because my team melted it before I could ever attack it. <laughs> And now everything's targetable. Woo! Success. Not scared. Yeah, you don't really need a tank for this content. You could just have someone kite these things with either counterattack, weapons drawn, or they could be like a semi off, like sub ninja, it's a semi or something. High evasion really says I don't care. I'm just gonna stand around and watch you miss because they're only 119 level. So, I mean, that's something. Every time I come out here on Thief, that, that's how I feel. If I just stacked more evasion and got evasion buffs from the Bard, like Mambo, then maybe I don't care <laughs> about anything. I could just do the content with Mambo. And these guys do have a big HP pool, but um, no big deal. They will go down eventually, and I'm pretty sure they're impossible to gauge, so you can't really death it. I don't, I've never killed one with death, and I've never checked one, so not sure, but I'm pretty confident that they're an M's. Pretty confident. I mean, their names aren't even the same, so. But that's okay, because I'm a paladin. I'm on a hard carry. Well, that's that. I mean, 10 minutes, killed the Halo. That's not bad. That's pretty good opening play for the uh, Odyssey. But we're gonna need to farm Izzat so we can actually pop this stuff, right? We don't quite have that. Pretty much don't have it. The 10 for killing the Agons, that's basically it. That's what we got. 10 for killing the Agon, guys. Get a box, okay. Boxes are good. Now, when it comes to boxes, though, I would say if you're pugging this, probably want to still quartermaster the box and split it later. That way it's fair. If you let the box free fall to people, you don't get that many boxes per run. That's going to be super unbalanced. Everyone else is going to be like, well, I helped you kill the NM and I didn't get any of the loot. Like, yeah. So I'll divvy them up afterward. I think that's the right play. It might even make the most sense to just stay quartermastered in the entire run and split after that. I think that's a good call. And if you go multiple times, like if you go every day, then maybe just put put uh, what you what you got yesterday in your bazaar so you can tell that it's not in your inventory because it's in your bazaar. And then like whatever you get in the run after you quartermastered, it's not going to be in your bazaar. It's going to be in your inventory. So you'll know the exact number for the run. I think that's probably what I'm going to do from now on. And if they don't like it, well, they can just go to another pug. So honestly, I don't even think we need Thief for this content. Like I'm consistently killing things and getting loot to drop. So Treasure Hunter is really like not even all that important, I think, in this content. Especially also consider that you're uh, opening treasure chests. When you open the treasure chest, Treasure Hunter is not checked when you make that action to open the box. So you can't even upgrade whatever's in the box with Treasure Hunter, so there's that. You might be able to upgrade what the NM drops though, like by tagging it with TH that might actually help. And it definitely does help on the fodder mobs, but I mean, what kind of a party are you actually building here? Are you going to clear the whole floors and then like maybe not even get past floor one? Or are you going to, are you going to, uh, are you going to just go up with the halos? Are you just going to attack the halos and go up after that? Also, there's seven floors. I hear that there are seven floors. 
So somebody took the time to run through each of the floors and just skip everything and go up to the next floor. And then at the end, apparently, it's bugged and you can't actually exit. But that's just what I heard, so I don't know for sure. I do know that I'm about to wreck all these mobs with no shield because I have Sentinel and that's good enough, right? Sure. Those semi shadows are OP, bruh. And Knights of Round. Super OP. That's a lot of beetles though, for real. At least they go down fast. Wrecked. Knights of Round to the face. So 10 minutes left and stuck somewhere on floor 2 or 3, I believe. I think this is floor 2 and we're gonna go up to floor 3 here. But only 9 minutes left, so we're really just getting to the halfway point, pretty much. And you can't actually go up unless you kill your aggro, so I've gotta kill this thing. Or just watch my party melt it really quick. That works too. Yeah, P.O.P. So everyone's trying to actually get to floor 7, or whatever happens to be the last floor. It's probably 7. And then actually use their Records of Eminence quest to exit the content and get the clear. But it apparently doesn't work. So, I mean, until that's actually proven false, I'm just gonna have to assume that whoever said it was accurate. Eventually I'll get to floor 7, and I'll actually go up there, and since I kind of know the content, I'll know for sure if I'm actually bugged, or I they just didn't know what they were talking about, and it's totally working properly, so we'll know. We'll know soon enough, maybe tomorrow. But the thing is, is I'm gonna have to spend some time actually figuring out where all the confluxes are at to go up to the next floor and it, within the 30 minute block, right? And I don't have the locations of all of them memorized yet. It's gonna take a few days probably to figure all that out. But yeah, it's pretty rough, uh, pretty rough. I actually have a shield equipped right now, so I shield bashed, but um, it was showing that I had the Chris on still because of the lag. There's a lot of mobs hitting me in the face right now. And uh, our white mage was struggling for mana, but she's okay now. So I'm hoping I don't go down, but I probably will. The white mage is kind of new at white mage, I think, in this particular pickup group. But I mean, having the paladin does allow you to do stuff like this. Going up and just not caring about whatever they do. Perfect dodge also, but I mean, that's, even, that's more risky because you can't really hold hate. But these orcs aren't all that scary. We'll just kill the, sh the circle really quick and then actually get out of the content. Ha have the uh, have the orcs actually have their name shown. Unless I just die here, that would suck. Pretty annoying. Yeah, the fast cast set, if it were any good at all, I would be getting these cure fours off and I wouldn't have this problem right now where I'm taxing the white mage. So that's directly related to my fast cast set or lack thereof. But that's okay, baby steps, knights of round. Looking pretty dead. 17 health. I think the white mage also needs a fast cast set, honestly. That's okay. If I had known that we were going to have problems with heals, I would have brought an extra healer. But, uh, whatever. We only had four minutes left in the content, so... That is enough time to clear it, though. Honestly, you could clear it in four minutes. But probably not with this group at this point. If it were pones a lot, it would be, it would be different, I think. But they're hanging in there. They're going to get a pick. They got a pick. But now they have like five orcs with Warcry bashing them in the face. Gonna be pretty rough. Oh well. We've got another character. No big deal. We'll just hop on the other character. Divvy up some loot real quick. Yep, pones a bit. Ready to go. Ready to go. Gonna bring Thief. Because additional effect death on Odium. Why not? And I'm playing on a mule, so I mean, if, if they're really, if my gear, if I wanna make my gear as unimportant as possible and procrastinate on getting better gear, then I just put on Odium, and I don't care about what's in my other 15 slots, because I'm going to kill him in one poke anyway. That's the plan. I think Odium is like the best first weapon to have on your extra character when you go into Odyssey. I think so. I can't think of a better item that I would want to get first to spam Odyssey every day with. Maybe uh, if you're playing Monk, get the Denouements. Definitely, if you're playing Monk, get the Denouements because it has additional effect colossal blow and that is the same as death pretty much so we're just gonna skip floor one go to floor two me and the taru army try to skip a lot of floor two as well i think here's the issue though uh i didn't really communicate very well with these guys so i'm way ahead of them right now and i think they might be lost and we're not in discord so uh I'm not using Sneak Invis, also a problem. Not a huge problem though, I'll be honest, because you can flee and hide. 
Like, you don't need sneak invis for this content. You really just need your party to keep up with you, honestly, and not do this. Like, what the hell? <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> that wasn't me. I got one dog on myself. <laughs> that was not me. That was the rest of my party. And I don't know what he's doing. Like, why are you why are you running so far away from the other dead person? Because now when you die, it's gonna be two totally different sides of the map where the corpses are at. That's gonna tax the white mage so much. Like, why would you do that to everyone else in the party? I mean, I get it, you were trying to stay alive, trying to go back to your party, but back to where the AFK guys were at the start, but that you, that's not your job. Like, it's their job to not be AFK in the content, like, and not give me some silly excuse about how they were still loading into this new floor, because that's bullshit. They could have definitely caught up, and they just didn't. And that's on them. That's on them. So here we are on floor two with 25 minutes but we're dead that's upsetting notice that we only have 12 minutes left what happened gee whiz i don't know man i don't know what happened but uh suddenly we just lost the whole 12 minutes yeah pickup groups do that to you i'm just saying like that's you know i'm just saying it's whatever it's whatever I mean, we might be able to salvage this run in 12 minutes, but I would have much rather done way better with 30 minutes, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's whatever. I can get a lot done in Odyssey with 12 minutes on the clock. I really don't know why you're complaining about Diseased, honestly. Like, okay, the Hounds are gonna give you Disease, that's what they do. They have the Breath Attack, it gives you Disease. But who cares? <laughs> like, there's things that there's other things we need to worry about besides your disease. Keep your disease to yourself, please. I don't want it. Oh damn it! I already got it. Fuck. Well, I guess I don't care either. <laughs> like, like normal players, because it's just disease. Okay, so we need to do something with this nine minutes on the clock. Period. So I think we just farm up and try to salvage the run. That's a lot of potential right there in front of us. So maybe we just farm up for nine minutes. Plus, who doesn't want to kill a bunch of giants anyway? Technically, they're golems, but the name says giant. So I guess I guess they are giants. They can be both, damn it. The, the giants in this game are called giguses anyway. That's not a gigas. Matter of fact, I don't think there there can be giguses in this content because giguses are beastmen. And the beastmen I've seen so far are always the invisible ones that follow the same pattern as the uh, uh, Sandoria Bastaka Winter Zones, which is Yagudo and Gideus, uh, and then you have Orcs and Orlais Peak or whatever the fuck it's called. And then you have Turtles and Beedo. Cadavs and Bigo. And that's what you got here. Those three beastman types. And that's all you got here. Sucks to suck, Gigasis. But you're not going to be featured in the new content, as far as I can tell. Watch one of the NMs pop and be a Gigas now that I said that. And he, like, slaughters us all. Doubtful. Very doubtful. But yeah, there's a lot of giants we could farm, and it looks like people are spreading out and taking on their own individual targets to help clear faster. I mean, we only burned three minutes and we've got the whole floor cleared in three minutes, the whole section of the map anyway, that, not the whole entire map, but just this particular map. Cleared in three minutes, not bad, OP OP. But unfortunately, we don't have enough points to use the treasure chest. So we're gonna have to farm more stuff. And I don't think there's time to actually succeed. So honestly, what we need to have happen at this point with five minutes on the clock, there's a couple of things you could do. I would recommend if you're close to 10 Izzat and you know there's a chest or an NM nearby, with five minutes, you could probably kill the NM, and you could definitely open the chest. So you farm until you get your 10th Izzat if you only have five minutes on the clock. That's what I re would recommend. But if uh, if you only have like three or four Izzat, you would probably only be able to get 10 Izzat by killing another Halo and all of the uh, beastmen that are guarding that halo. That would be the only way I see you getting to 10 at that point with five minutes on the clock. And that's the only way that I see you being able to actually spend your Izzat and get extra loot before you get kicked out. But in general, if you just do this every day, uh, you're gonna get more or less is uh, more or less scales from each of your runs. So your Izzat's not really all gonna ma uh, not gonna matter all that much. 
is my point. I don't see super duper good runs giving me a whole lot more scales than really bad runs because this is technically my worst run that I've had all day. And after six runs, I could say that it still paid well on a terrible run. I still did pretty okay, not even worrying about farming the Izzat from killing monster after monster after monster until I got enough of them to actually spawn a boss because that's not even all that important. I think the consistent way to get the 10 Izzat is just to kill a Halo and kill those mobs that, that are guarding it and then you have the 10 Izzat and then you can either pop a boss or you could open a chest and uh, beyond that I don't think you should really focus on Izzat. You should focus on getting more Halos because the chunk of Izzat you get in that situation is just way better. And you don't get to keep the Izzat when you leave, so you might as well gauge the last few minutes of the event accordingly. So either get to 10 by killing the Halo, or just not get to 10 and just farm until you get scales in your treasure pool. So clearing the buffaloes here is not going to get me 10 Izzat, but it's going to get me a few scales, and that's going to be able to actually give everyone in the party a, bitter, a better cut after the 30 minutes. So that's exciting. So after the 30 minutes, we're actually going to be able to get some loot, even though we had a wipe. Some content, though, is not like that. If you wipe, you're, you're done. Like Omen, in the first floor, you get 10 minutes and you're kicked out. You don't get the time extension until the end of that 10 minutes. So here we are on a terrible run where we did have a wipe and we're still in the content and we're actually going up to floor 3 now. So with a bit more time on the clock we could actually get something done on floor 3 but a minute 30? I don't see it happening. And fortunately for us the, the halo spawned right here at the entrance of floor 3. So we go up to floor 3 and there's the halo and I'm very excited but the thing is a minute 30 on the clock and it slimes. What am I gonna do? How are we gonna kill slimes in a minute 30 with this party setup? I mean this is where the randomization kind of fucks you sometimes. So maybe you get lucky because you spawned an NM uh, sapling or whatever uh, and it doesn't kill anyone and you just get easy loot off of it. But then maybe you also get unlucky and in the last minute of the event you get slimes and you're not prepared to kill slimes. You're actually prepared to get one shot to the face by fluid spread and by fluid toss. But yeah, you're not ready to kill the slimes. And on top of that, it's right at the entrance and people are stacked and still getting aggro by the invisible beastmen. That's not good, because the only way you can actually do anything about the Beastmen is if you kill the Halo, and we're not even on the Halo, because we're still fighting our first slime! I don't get it. Like, what, what, my luck is, it could not be any worse on this floor. Like, honestly, if you have a minute 30 on the clock, and the next objective in front of your face is slimes and a Halo, just use your item and exit the event because you're wasting your time. It's gonna just suck for you, but whatever. No big deal. Lots of people in my party still don't know what to do, and that's pretty funny, but I, I, feel, I feel for them because they've only ever done it on their main character once or no times at all, and some of the people in this group actually, that's their first run, so they did pretty good for a first time I, I could have told them a little bit more but watch my videos and you'll see kind of what goes on in Odyssey and you'll be ready you'll be ready and you can do the content and that's important getting the content done anyway those were my three runs so we're pretty much done here I'm just gonna give out all the loot and that'll be a wrap and I guess maybe I'll make another video later but I really don't all have all that much time now so I'll see you guys in my next video thanks for watching Peace out.